Yo, Adam Saxon here with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. We are getting closer to the holiday season. Things are slowing down, but I still have some items for you. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Matt Allington's got a blog post where he looks at renaming blank for a slicer inside of Power BI. And he highlights that the importance of this is basically the fact that when you have a blank, it means that it couldn't find a respective value in a given dimension or lookup table. He's also got a corresponding video that goes along with this. So if this is something you're curious about or something you wanted to take care of, be sure to check out this blog post. Wolfgang Strasser's got multiple blog posts this week about the 24 days of the Power Platform, but the one I wanted to call out specifically this week was where and how to start. I get this question a lot, and you know, what are some good resources that I can go and get started with either Power BI or other things? So he put together a collection of links that you can go through to figure out where to go. So this is everywhere from documentation to blogs out in the community to videos on YouTube. Everything you need to do to get started is in this blog post. So I definitely recommend you check this out, whether you're using Power BI, Microsoft Flow, Power Apps, whatever, go check it out. Mike Carlo and Seth Bauer over at Power BI Tips have an item for you with regards to respecting layers. Anyone know what that means? This means your layers inside of your Power BI desktop report. And they go through and highlight a struggle I've personally had, I'm sure most of you have had, where you put like a rectangle behind the actual visual, but when you go and click, it comes in the front and it gets annoying. And so he's looking at how do you overcome that inside of Power BI Desktop. This is another one where they've got an associated video, so be sure to check this out. The links for the blog down in the description below, as well as the links for all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. Go check it out. Sven Bokoven, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, over at informationmagician.com has a really quick blog post for you talking about how you can change the bar width in your bar charts. This is actually a pretty cool trick, something that most people probably don't know about, but he goes through just a quick blog post, quick read, talks about how you can actually do this inside of your bar charts. It's very cool. So be sure to check this out if you struggle with bar widths inside of your bar charts and you wanna change that. There have been some updates for Q&A inside of Power BI. This is natural language search. Every time I show this, people get really excited. Some people don't even know it's there, but we've had Q&A inside of Power BI for quite a while. You can now ask related questions off of your base question. So that means you can ask your first question and then follow that up with subsequent questions. And this blog post goes through and talks about a lot of different examples of how you could end up doing this. It's a very cool feature. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already and make sure you've got the December update of Power BI Desktop. The other item with Power BI Q&A that's really awesome is now it supports against role level security for cloud-based data sets. So this means if you're doing import or direct query, it will actually work with those data sets if RLS is enabled for them. So Q&A will work, yay. So if you've been using RLS inside of your data source, but you've been wanting to use Q&A as part of it, now you can. For the last item this week, I wanted to do a little bit of a shameless plug just because it was awesome and epic and I wanna make sure that you see it. This is the cold open. This was done at the BI Power Hour at Pass Summit and this was the brainchild of Matt Mason and Matthew Roach. It was really fun to do. It took a little bit for the audience to figure out what was actually going on, but this was how the BI Power Hour was actually opened at Pass Summit. It was pretty cool, it was really fun. Check it out down in the links below. All right, I wanna pass it off to you. What was the most awesome thing this last week that you heard? Or if there was something that I didn't mention that you thought was also awesome, go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and let me know. If you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching, keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.